Okay, Daisy fans, try not to freak out, but it seems like your favorite princess may have once been planned for the Super Mario Brothers movie before being cut entirely. I know, I know, it's sad, but hey, she can still appear in a future movie. So hey everyone, Andre here to check out some brand new concept art, or at least recently discovered concept art, for the Super Mario Brothers movie, showing off some ideas explored for the film that we didn't know about before. So this all comes to us by way of a portfolio posted online by Jed Defender Fur. I hope I said that right, I apologize Jed if I didn't. Um, uh, which uh, has a whole bunch of um, concept art he created for a variety of films he's covered, including Wrecked Ralph, uh, Secret Life of Pets, a Minion Short, and of course, the Super Mario Brothers movie. And there are some really interesting stuff here. Let me go ahead and go to the uh, full Mario Brothers page here. And actually, there's a little bit more than this, um, including a couple of videos showing um, like a pre viz animated sequence for the Mario Kart scene and Mario's introduction to uh, Princess Peach, or more specifically, sneaking into her castle. Both of which are a little different from the final film, though a little bit similar. Um, unfortunately, we can't show you those videos because they very clearly say don't record or reproduce them in any way. So if you want to check those out, click the link in the description below. But again, they're overall very similar, except um, Mario entering the castle is done without the aid of Captain Toad, as far as we can tell. He finds a secret platform or a floating platform that takes him up to a tower he enters, and uh, that's how he encounters Princess Peach eventually that way. Although not before uh, trying to get in through the front door, where the Toads, the Toads, security guards rudely make fun of his mustache calling it disgusting what no wonder they cut it all right so again we can't show those to you but as far as i can tell we can show you the rest of this concept art because it doesn't have the same warning so fingers crossed all right here we go let's go through it and there's some really interesting stuff here let me go and get myself out of the way so you can all better see this and um I already prearranged them in a, in a uh, manner that loosely corresponds with the film because as it turns out, a lot of this concert art is actually pretty faithful to the overall structure of the film, though individually the scenes do have some key differences. So, right, uh, so of course, we're starting off with Bowser stealing the superstar from the penguins. And again, in a scene very similar to the final film, uh, Bowser standing atop a melted carcass of the castle, I guess. We can see the king freaking out here. Uh, we can see the bombs flying around, which weren't featured in that scene at all, along with these fireball uh, enemies from Mario, which again, weren't seen. And uh, fire bros too, uh, are helping them melt the ice and also catching this poor penguin on fire. So again, overall idea is similar, but the mechanics or the characters are, are a bit different. Uh, but ultimately, Bowser grabbing the Superstar is the same. Moving on, we get what appears to be either our introduction to Mario and Luigi, or more likely a flashback uh, to them as teenagers. So I don't know if this would have been how they would have introduced them, or if it would come later in the film. The final film did have a flashback, of course, but it was to them as babies. Here we can see them uh, looking like they're shaving or doing manscaping, I guess, uh, in the mirror together. Um, and I like how Mario is holding a full pair of scissors or shears, which is unnecessary for the amount of facial hair he actually has at this point, uh, you know, being a teenager. Um, Luigi, is he using a fork, like, uh, Little Mermaid style to manage his mustache? So this is kind of a cute idea. I don't mind that was cut too much, uh, so to speak. Um, but it's interesting that they had explored a flashback to their teenage looking years, which is interesting considering something else coming up soon, which we'll be getting to. All right, next up though, we have our proper introduction to Mario and Luigi with them in their plumbing van, uh, which actually looks fairly similar to the final film, but there are uh, there are some key differences though. Uh, for one, the van itself is a little bit more Volkswagen style with like a flat, flat or curved front, unlike the one that has an actual nose in the movie. Yes, I have the actual toy. Uh, I love the plumbing van, so. Also, uh, unlike this one, it's not Super Mario Brothers plumbing, it's actually Luigi Bros plumbing, which is really interesting, perhaps one of the biggest differences here. And we actually have seen, I forget we've seen this exact concept art before, but we have seen things similar to this, so I wonder what ideas they were fully exploring. We can even see Mario and Luigi acting a little bit different, with Luigi being laid back, super, um, like, really casual, and not at all worried, unlike his movie portrayal, where he's worried constantly, and Mario actually looks to be the one who's a little bit more anxious in this case, so really a complete reversal of roles. Also, the license plate is a cute little Easter egg, with ML for Mario and Luigi, and 1983 being their first appearance together in the Mario Brothers arcade game, which came out in 1983. Such a cute reference, I kind of wish they actually had kept that one, because as far as I know, that game was not referenced at all in the movie and it's almost like they forgot it existed all right uh also there's a dog in the car next door is that francis who knows all right let's continue on 
we get another cute uh, picture of a toad at a bus stop. And I love the idea of using floating bricks as like the overhang with complete with lighting uh, to protect them from the elements as well, I imagine. We also have a uh, like a little TV here built into a brick with again, the clear bus stop sign. Um, if this is Captain Toad or a random toad, who knows? Um, it looks like it is a little darker, clearly with the lights being on. So I don't know if they were going to explore the Toad Town at night at one point. We do have a brief scene at the end of the movie where Princess Peach is warning everyone. Maybe that's when this is from. But it, again, this is all, just to be clear, this is all blue sky concept art, meaning there's no limits, no budget. Just, you know, do whatever you want and then we'll figure it out for the actual movie. So it may have never been fully intended to be in the film. They could have been exploring how things might work. Uh, moving on, we get a look at, at something else I feel like we may have seen before, something similar with Mario sneaking into the castle, to finding a war pipe seemingly below the bridge. This is different from the video he he has posted on the website itself, or sorry, on the same website I've linked to. Um, so it's interesting that they seem to explore a couple of different ideas for Mario entering the castle. Again, he found a war pipe here, which is fitting enough. Uh, the video shows him finding a hidden platform, but ultimately in the final film, they sneak in through the front door. So, uh, next, here we go. Here's what we've been waiting for. Daisy right there, a young Daisy seemingly. Gotta love like the 70s, 80s style hair, I guess. Along with Princess Peach at the Mushroom High Prom, we can see Toadette alongside them too. Also with a baby Bowser, like a younger Bowser running away, holding the same fire flowers or similar fire flowers to what he did to, <coughs> to propose with. Those were prom plants, but similar idea. Very cute. Bowser's left in tears. So it seems like they were once exploring a concept in which Bowser felt burned, so to speak, uh, from an experience earlier with Princess Peach. And maybe that's what drove him later on, either to, you know, try to get back with her or get revenge on her. Again, it seems like the story details were a little bit different at some point. So this is really cute. Also, by the way, shout out to Mouser from Mario 2, a guy we haven't seen in forever. So love that he's back. Also patting this weird looking Goomba guy. So, um, and also you can see various other, you know, Mario enemies here too. We got Charging Tux, Charging Chucks. We've got uh, a Hammer Bro, uh, Birdo, Shy Guy. So it seems like at some point they had planned for everyone to be getting along, you know, very friendly like uh, as kind of like an origin story for Bowser. Um, so this is all, again, just really interesting that they had explored this. I don't know if I love this idea or not. I think it's cute seeing it here. Um, but it does show how Daisy was at least once planned for the film. Also, a little shout-out to their sporting uh, days uh, with the tennis racket in the um, when their locker's there. So, again, really cute scene. Obviously, it's a shame we lost Daisy in the process, and it would have been fun to see them as their younger selves, but clearly they completely discarded this concept of the final movie um, as, you know, we see, you know, we see Peach enter the Mushroom Kingdom through a war pipe, and there seemingly is no, like, collective school that everyone goes to. All right, we're going to move on here to the next scene, uh, where I assume this is what would replace the prison sequence from the movie, where they end up, you know, in the cages above the lava. In this case, we can see the Penguin King looking very different from the final film, actually hilariously looking much bigger here as he joked about at the beginning of the movie. So they totally changed the concept of that. We can see Kamek here uh, functioning similar as well, but riding not on his broom, but on the Mario World style, like, skull platforms, which is interesting. We also have a ton of Shy Guys here. Uh, we have a Beanstalk. We've got some kind of Koopa sign above. I don't know what that's about. Um, or door, I guess. And again, it's all above a pit of lava. So they're clearly like torturing him. I don't know if they're trying to get information from him. Um, and again, I assume this is the jail cell replacement sequence, but it could have also been earlier in the movie too, to maybe to correspond with the opening se sequence. Um, so I definitely prefer the movie's version of this, uh, from what I can tell, unless this was intended to be something totally different. But again, we can see Kamek using the magic power, just like he does in the final film. And uh, it really does seem like they're threatening this guy. So well, look at the lights emitting from his eyes. Jeez. So this might have been a little darker, perhaps, for the movie than they intended. All right, next up, we have what appears to be the final battle scene. I assume it has to be the final battle scene. With a ton going on. I, there is, there's more enemies here uh, than even in the final film, which is crazy. More enemy types, at the least. Uh... We've got, you know, Bullet Bills. We've got King Boo, who made appearance at the wedding. We've got Mario stomping Bowser up here. We've got Toad riding a blue flying Yoshi. And they, again, a reference to Mario World. Down here, we've got Daisy again riding a Wiggler, showing she wasn't just going to be a flashback. She was going to be a prominent character in the film. We have uh, Princess Peach with her Super Princess Peach umbrella on top of the Thwomp, which did not appear in the final film. We've got Toadsworth down here, baby. I just noticed that. Riding a green Yoshi. We've got the uh, the Snow Guys. I forget what they're called. 
Ball from the Snow Kingdom. We've got Spike here, a giant Spike, of course. We got Pokey, another uh, Charging Tuck Chuck down here. We have uh, what else do we have? Uh, a Fire Bro, Toadette down here. Again, a lot of penguins involved in the final battle. Um, yeah, there's a, there's just a lot of action happening here. Uh, and also, you can see you know, King Boo is of course on top of um, a ship, a uh, like a. Uh, I think that it might be Bowser's ship, it looks like, with Luigi strapped to the front of it. So I, I do kind of like that idea. So Luigi is being really thrust into uh, this front and center, um, very much exposed. Uh, so yeah, this is a really fun piece of art. Obviously, this is never going to be how the final battle was going to take place because there's just way too much for this to be coherent in a single scene. But again, just a really fun idea. Is that... Cranky Kong down here, by the way, too. So, again, getting a little bit more involved in the final scene as opposed to being kidnapped for it. Uh, yeah, so just all really interesting. Now, I think we have one, at least one piece of art left. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That was, that was it. So, yeah, there you go, everyone. That is a look at the concept art for the Mario movie. Um, specifically, eight pieces. Again, there are two videos on the website as well. So, you can definitely check those out if you want to take a look at some more changes to it. But, yeah, I, I find this stuff just fascinating to look at. To see what ideas they're exploring. You know, when they had just at the most a loose framework for the film. We're still trying to figure everything out. Like, who would appear. What the exact plot was what the sequence of events exactly were, and even in that context, how those events played out. Again, like Mario sneaking into the castle here, very different from the final film. So I really like I really like seeing all of this. I know some people will be like, I wish I had explored that route, but to that I say, you know, the grass is always greener. Um, I'm very happy with where they end up with the final film, and I think, you know, based on the possible leak we saw of the Mario Brothers 2 movie yesterday, I think this still leaves the door open now to Daisy potentially coming back for a sequel. I mean, if anything, this I think lends even more credence to her being introduced in a future movie, because clearly they, they had explored bringing her in for this one. I think leaving her out was probably the right call for now, but I think there's a ton of opportunity there to bring her back in the future. But yeah, there you go, everyone. That's a look at the art, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of it, and if you did, please consider clicking that subscribe button. As you probably know, we were hacked last week, then our channel was terminated for a couple of days. We ended up losing about 20,000 subscribers in the process. If you enjoyed this video, please click that subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment, just so we can try and get back to uh, where we were. So again, thanks everyone for uh, your support, and um, with that, I'm out of here. With that, and with that again, we'll catch you later. Bye everyone.